Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about phase diagrams of binary solutions, or in other words, phase diagrams of solutions made up of only two components. Let's imagine that we have initially a system made up of a cylinder and a piston. As can be seen from the drawing, the piston is touching the surface of a liquid, which happens to be a solution made up of components A and B. The concentrations of A and B, in terms of their mole fractions, might be something like 30% A and 70% B. Mathematically, we're gonna describe the mole fraction of A as ZA, which equals, in this case, 0.3, and the mole fraction of B as ZB, which happens to be 0.7. Throughout this example, we're going to be monitoring the system temperature, which will be denoted by a lowercase t, and we're also going to assume that the system will be held at constant pressure. Let's now take our drawing here to the left and create a graph. In the y-axis we're going to represent the system temperature, whereas the x-axis is going to represent the mole fraction of component A. Let's say that initially we are at a temperature T and a mole fraction of A, ZA. Our system in this state can therefore be represented by the point shown as a red X. Now let's imagine that heat is supplied to our system. If that is the case, then the system temperature might go up. And we're going to end up in a different state, here represented again by the red X. If we supply even more heat to the system, then again the temperature might rise. We end up at a new point. But if you look carefully at the drawing on the left, you might notice that a vapor phase begins to form. The temperature at which the first few bubbles of vapor start forming is known as the bubble point. Since our system is now composed of two different phases, each of which potentially having a different mole fraction of A, in order to completely describe the system we're going to need two points. And these are shown here in the graph as the blue and red points. The blue point denotes the liquid phase, whereas the red point denotes the vapor phase. Notice that the mole fraction of A in the vapor phase, let's call it YA, is greater than ZA, which is the mole fraction of A in our initial solution. And that is due to the fact that in our example A is more volatile than B, which means that it has a greater tendency of moving towards the vapor phase. On the other hand, since so little vapor has formed this far, the composition of the liquid phase doesn't really change much. Therefore, the mole fraction of A in the liquid phase, let's call it XA, is virtually the same as ZA. Now let's add a little bit more heat to the system. Again, the temperature increases, we move to a new point, and we get new mole fractions of A in the liquid phase, namely XA, and in the vapor phase, namely YA. Notice that the mole fraction of A in the liquid phase has gone down when compared to the last point. That is due to the fact that A is moving to the vapor phase. Therefore, there's going to be less A in the liquid phase, and therefore, its mole fraction is going to go down. Now, notice that the mole fraction of A also diminishes in the vapor phase. And that is the case because, despite A being the more volatile component, that doesn't mean that B isn't moving to the vapor phase as well. For this reason, as more heat is added to the system, more B moves towards the vapor phase, which lowers the concentration of A. Adding still more heat, temperature keeps going up, until we reach a point where only the last few droplets of the liquid phase still remain. These last droplets, immersed in an atmosphere of saturated solution, are kind of like dew in a cold morning. And for this reason, this temperature is known as the dew point. Notice that at the dew point, virtually all solution has vaporized, for which reason the mole fraction of A in the vapor phase is going to be virtually equal to the mole fraction in the original solution, ZA. Now if we add even more heat, the last few droplets are going to vaporize and we are going to end up in a system composed only of one vapor phase. Notice that by setting the mole fraction of A in our system to a fixed value ZA and by gradually increasing the temperature T, we were able to obtain a series of points. Let us now move our graph here to the center. Now we might have the idea of running this experiment again, but now starting from a different mole fraction of A, ZA. If we do so starting from here, we're going to obtain a new set of points, shown here in the graph. And we might do it again, starting again from a new point, which would give us yet another set of points. Now once we get enough points, we can sort of see what the graph is going to look like. 
And then we may decide to connect these points through a pair of curves. The red curve represents the vapor phase, whereas the blue curve represents the liquid phase. Now for clarity's sake, let's remove the experimental points and leave only the curves. Notice that the curves divide the graph into three distinct regions. The lowermost blue region corresponds to the points where the system was composed of only one liquid phase. Similarly, the uppermost red region corresponds to the points where the system is composed of one single vapor phase. The middle region corresponded to the points where liquid and vapor phases coexisted. Now let's see how you can use these graphs to figure out the dew and bubble points of a given system. So let's say that the mole fraction of A in your system is ZA. In order for you to get the bubble point, all you have to do is read it off the blue line. That is the reason for which the blue line is known as the bubble point curve. Likewise, if you want to find out the dew point of your system, all you have to do is read the temperature off the red line. And that is the reason why the red line is known as the dew point curve. And that's gonna be all for today. If you liked our video and would like to see more in the future, please subscribe to our channel. And if you have any suggestions, please leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.